pieces you could bring up as out at that point. You know, no, no, I don't think a lot of these chemicals really even existed um, before that time period. Wrestlers really weren't signing autographs at, at, at shows like this. Right. Um, I think it's only been going on for maybe 10 to 12, I mean, uh, maybe 15 to 16, 17 years. And the, you know, as you know, they're not making any, any new talent. I mean, they release guys here and there. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know, everybody who's anybody has been out. And a couple of names that you brought up um, last week, I think you said, well, you know, they should bring out Jesse Ventura or they should bring out Rick Martel and Don Morocco. And I think you had a little bit of a hard time coming up with anybody else besides those three. I said, because uh, I think Bull, you Bull, Nicano, Bull Nicano. Oh, Bull Nicano, that's right. And, you know, and I sat there and I said, well, there's reasons why every one of them does not come out. And, and, and I think that that is a big part of it. You know, we're, we're, Terrence, Legends of the Ring, Big Event, me, you, we're all going to be repeating guests um, over and over again. It's just, it, it, there, there is nothing else you can do. Right. And, and uh, you know, Rick Martel has been offered thousands and thousands of dollars, more than he's probably worth because he hasn't been out in six years. Um, and he keeps turning everything down. He's turned me down. He's turned down... Um, I'm sure Legends of the Ring, he's turned down big events. I know he's turned down other vendors that I've talked to. Yeah, he's turned me he, down. He, he, <laughs> he's turned you down. He does not <laughs> want to do anything. So you you can't get a guy out that doesn't want to do anything. Don Morocco is t- turned me down recently and other people because I think his he lives in Hawaii and there's uh, he doesn't want to do the flight anymore. Now, yeah. could that change at some point? If you throw enough money at him, maybe. Is it worth it to throw enough money at him? Not always. What do you think? No, not always. I mean, it's a, uh, like we said last week, it's a gamble. Either way, doesn't matter what you spend, but obviously the more money you spend on somebody, the the risk uh, is higher. Sometimes lower, lower risk, uh, sorry, sometimes low risk, high reward, but, you know, if you're throwing a lot of money, as a vendor, if you're throwing a lot of money at somebody, um, it's a very high risk. I think, though, as a promoter of the show on your super ticket, if you're spending a certain amount of money on that talent, your risk is a, is a little bit little bit lower uh, because you're bringing yeah. other names that surround them and they're part of your super ticket. So when people buy that super ticket, that money is already contributed towards that talent. Yeah, and, and, and that will work with certain guys. But, um, you know, then there's just some guys that you just know that they're not, that it's just a bad investment. And, and, you know, I mean, Jesse Ventura, I heard, was insane amount of money in a, in a private plane. And, who, you know, is that all true? I don't know. If it is, not worth it. And and it kind of goes, you know, Bull Nakano, if she's in Japan, mm-hmm. you know, that's always a little bit of a, a, a rough thing to try to get somebody who's there to contact them. And, I mean, could it be worked out? Maybe. Is she really that big of a name that's going to make that much of a difference yet? I, I don't know. I don't know if she's worth the it's big more of a, a I, think, I think Bull Nakano would be more of a nostalgic name for, uh, you know, those fanatic fans that have their encyclopedias that, you know, want that, uh, that's, you mm-hmm. know, filled up. Because, you know, part of life is that, you you know, we lose people. And, you know, with the wrestling business, mm-hmm. I think that industry loses people at a higher, more rapid pace than any other industry so I think a name that really hasn't been around in a while that's, you know, there's things for them to sign. People kind of want that because you never know when you're going to get that news that that person's no longer with us. Well, and that and that brings up another good point where wrestlers are dying at a rapid pace. And, I mean, you know, just a couple of years ago you had Roddy Piper and Ultimate Warrior in China and Bruno San Martino that were re- regularly doing these things. Right. And... Now they're all passed away, and they would be all considered VIP or platinum guests, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. But you can't, you know, they're gone, and that, and that, you know, and then you lost guys like George Steele and Jimmy Snuka, and it, and it just goes on and on, and and you know, you're depleting it. And I don't think that you know the big casses or you know even the James Ellsworths are are have the legs to that a Georgie Animal Steel or 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 uh, um, 
uh, Jimmy Snooker will have that we'll be talking about them, you know, 30 years from now. Right. Um, it's a, it's a, different, so, a know, different era, though. You know, you're talking, like you said, maybe within the last 20 years, this has become a very uh, large thing, signings, where if you wanted an autograph back in the day, you went to an arena and either leaned over the railing to get something signed or you waited in the parking lot, you know, uh, before they went to the bus or the car. So when these guys have a brief amount of time, like Big Cass or Enzo, where they wrestle five, six years on TV and then boom, they're gone, you know, that didn't happen, you know, when you guys first started this. You know, releases weren't public. So it's just a guy disappeared off TV and nobody saw him ever again. Now it's everything, social media, everything's just so public, everybody knows. Yes. And before you get Terrence on, I just wanted to also say some of the stuff I did agree with you on, without a doubt. I absolutely, and again, I'm we're, me and Terrence and James, we get along, but I absolutely hate their hotel. And I understand that if they get a great deal on it, I, as, as a business person, I could understand that. And, right. and you know, you want to, you know, maybe that's the difference of making being profitable and not profitable. But the hotel is, is bad. From I mean, there's no lobby to speak of. The, the restaurant is horrendous um you know it's you know i don't like all the different rooms that they have down the hall and this that and the other right um it's not around anything so to me you're right the the hotel is is a a big issue um and and then i think they also have to update uh modernize some of their their um advertising you know um again some of the stuff was didn't have to be done years back we you know they used to be message boards everybody uses on message boards you know five, ten years ago, and now nobody's on message boards. You know, different things have come and gone, and um, and I think maybe they have to update that a little bit to, to, to get some of that stuff out there. Um, and, you know, and, and I, but I do have great respect to them because of the fact that they've been doing this steadily since, I think, 2004. And, think, you know, them doing that, two shows every year, you know, says something when guys have come and gone, me included, um, you know, as far as running the, my own shows, um, that they they let, they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I just think that they have to fine tune some of the stuff that they're doing. And you know, if they're looking into getting a new hotel, I would think that would be a a big plus. I, I sometimes don't understand why they don't go by the Newark Airport, right, right outside the Newark Airport. But I, you know, I don't know how expensive those things would be. Uh, from the conversations I had with Bolton, I mean, uh, there was an, a ridiculous amount of money that was wanted uh, for those hotels. Uh, but there there are other areas. I mean, Central Jersey, the, the Woodbridge, Edison area, very large with uh, business and um, convention halls, things like that. The Sheridan and Raritan uh-huh. Center, um, the Renaissance in Woodbridge. I mean, huge, huge convention centers, huge um, banquet halls that can be used. You know, but again, I haven't been in there. I haven't asked what the prices are and things like that. You know, but my my thing was, hey, look, you know, I, I respect them 110% about the fact that they've been doing this as long as they have. I think James has been doing this since the late 90s. So I understand that. But, you know, we're in 2018, you know, the back half of the year heading into 2019. You have to get with the times. You know, have you have to... Everybody has to evolve and adapt and just, sure. you know, modernize. So if that means sure. stepping up with a newer hotel, you might have to do it. If you're, if that means, you know, maybe my suggestion would be, and I'll ask your opinion. What if they cut to one show a year and just make it one mega show? Because um, there's a lot of these conventions all over the place that also hurts business. Well, yeah. That, you know, that might be something where it's heading to, um, where they, you know, people are going to do one show. Because, you know, I've, I said five, six years ago, how long is this going to last? How long is this last? People still are doing it. It seems like fans are still coming out, um, you know, and, and but but maybe that's where it's headed, is, is, to, is to do one bigger show a year. Maybe, you know, um, you, that might be something that, you know, is, is where it's going to. Mm-hmm. I, I don't... Um, I, I, one thing I did want to bring up, you know, before you get Terrence on also is I wanted to put my gripe out there with some of the other vendors that have 
come out mm-hmm. over the years. And nothing huge, nothing big. I'm not trying to start any kind of drama or anything. But I, at these shows, I, you know, and again, when I first started, I was a lot more headstrong and younger and, you know, and I didn't want anybody stepping on my toes and stuff. And I get that. Um, now that I'm in my mid forties, I, I don't, I'm mellowed and I've been doing this for a long time. I don't have the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, my, my, you know, mood is not, is, is much mellower. So I, my point being is like when we trade things, like I would trade things with you, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times I would say, Hey Kevin, can I get a couple autographs from your guys? Whatever you need, tell me, you right. hand me cards. I think the other, the other show, the last show legends, you handed me, I think, I don't know, eight or nine Arn Anderson cards. I got them signed. I think it was Arn Anderson, right? Yeah, it was. And I got them signed. So I handed them back. I got, I got one thing from Raven. I don't care. You know, it's not, I don't care if I'm getting, if you're getting five, six things to one show and I'm getting one thing that show and maybe the next show I'm getting five or six things and you're getting one thing. I just think that when we are, you know, vendors, I think vendors have to be a little more um, accommodating to the other vendor. Of course. Um, and some of them are. You and you have always, I, I remember going up to you a couple of years ago, you were open, hey, let's trade, you're cool with that, that's fine, and we've worked like that ever since. Yep. Um, Richie DeGregor cannot do that. <laughs> I don't know, I know Richie's very high strung, and this is not a knock on Richie, but, you know, I, you know, he doesn't, he thinks that everybody's, you know, trying to get in his pocket if I come up and say, hey, Richie, I need a couple things, why don't we trade, get whatever you need. Oh, I don't need anything, I don't need anything. Well, <laughs> you know, maybe you don't need anything today, but you might need something the next job. And I, and I just think that it's common courtesy, within reason, for vendors to, to, to do that trade. And the only person I ever really ran into a major problem with is Richie DeGregor with that. I, I did have a little issues with uh, Dave a couple times where Dave got his got his dander up a couple times because he, he thought I was coming over trying to step on his toes. And I'm like, Dave, I'm not. I'm like, just whatever you need. I don't care. You come over to my table, you get whatever you need. I just need a couple things. I'm like, you know, I, I don't need to talk to the guy like the fans do. I'm just going in and getting my things signed and running. I, I don't, you know, I don't care. And I, and I think that the newer vendors, some of them, have some sort of bravado up where they just don't want to do that, or they just feel like they're getting taken advantage of. And I try to tell them all the time, anybody who wants anything from me, get it. You know, as far as the vendors. And reciprocate back. That's it. I don't know what your feeling is on that. No, I agree. Um, I think I've mentioned this numerous times that uh, all vendors need to step up and be a little bit more cohesive and help each other out. You know, whether, you know, it's a vendor saying, hey, do you have a contact for this person? And, and sure, here you go. Uh, you know, can you call this person and ask them, uh, you know, if it's okay if I contact them? Yeah, sure, no problem. You know, well, oh, that, that was a big thing. That was a big thing. I mean, years, year to years, people would not even give their contacts over. I used to ask certain people and they'd be like, oh, can I get that number? And they would, they would guard it like it's, it's a secret. And meanwhile... <laughs> Like, you know, a couple, you know, all I had to do was make one of the different phone call and then I would get the number. Right. It's, it's like, you know, it, it, these numbers are not secret. You know, nobody is the exclusive agent to any of these guys. I mean, I remember, you know, Richie would throw around terms like my clients, my client. I mean, I, you know, that's nice to say, you know, I mean, but let's be serious in what we're doing here. I mean, we're, we're not, you know you know, we're, we're hiring guys for the day to come out to do some more signings. And that's it. We're not, you know, the agents of the stars. We're not, you know, um, you know, exclusive really with it. If any wrestler is going to take the money from anybody that calls. They're all in need of money. They're all looking to work no matter who's paying them. And, and, um, you know, but th- that's just one thing, but it's just my rant that I think that, the, that a lot of the vendors and I've only had a problem with a couple need to, I wish they would. Everybody would just kind of like, and I'm going back with that. You want something from me? Get it from me. Right. Let me get something from you, and that's it. You know. No, I uh, I understand completely. I agree. Um, you know, everybody 
So try to help each other out. Uh, you know, anybody that comes to my table that is a, is a vendor, I have no problem, um, you know, hooking them up, whatever they need.